Rats are often part of the garden allotment or farm ecosystem. With plenty of food available in the gardens and in the compost, lots of habitat and places to build nests or to hide in the surrounding landscape, and often a lack of natural predators, there isn't a lot to prevent the increase in rat population. Or at least that is what I've observed through the many years of managing the Red Gardens project. As I've been dealing with rats in and around the gardens for as long as I've been on this site growing vegetables. I have tried a lot of different methods of controlling the rat population in the past, which I've talked about a few times in previous videos. But as with many things, my thinking about this controversial topic has changed over the years. I've also received a fair amount of criticism about the different methods I use, and people have offered suggestions about other possibilities or approaches, some of which I've experimented with. And because so much depends on context, I thought it would be useful to talk about the nine ways that I think there are to deal with rats in and around the spaces we grow vegetables. Many people are afraid of rats, or think that they are disgusting or dangerous, but I think they are intelligent and quite amazing creatures. As far as I've been able to determine, the only real danger with rats is a possible spread of leptospirosis, or Veal's disease, which is dangerous. But it is apparently a waterborne disease, with the greatest risks of infection being when scratches, wounds, or broken skin come in contact with puddles or bodies of water that rat urine may have been washed into. So it is relatively easy to reduce risks simply by avoiding contact with standing water in and around the gardens, and by following sensible hygiene practices, such as covering wounds with waterproof bandages, washing hands, and washing everything we harvest. And if we can accept that they are not dangerous, or that the risk can be extremely low, then perhaps the first method or approach of dealing with rats is to simply tolerate them, to accept that they are part of the landscape and perhaps that they have a right to exist and can form part of a natural ecosystem, especially if they can become food for wild predators within that ecosystem. This sounds great and could work for those who grow food on their own property far enough away from others, but the gardens I manage are within a larger allotment area that is shared with many other people, which is also publicly accessible. And we have been quite good at creating a landscape that makes an ideal habitat for many creatures, including rats, with a lot of food in the gardens and in the numerous compost piles, and not many natural predators in the area. These are ideal conditions for a rat population to get much bigger than most people will tolerate. The second method for dealing with rats is to simply not attract them. And this is the most common criticism or comment that I get. It is widely believed that adding cooked foods, meat scraps, oils, and other similar items to a compost pile will attract rats. And it is probably true that rats are less likely to eat a discarded carrot, potato peel, or apple if stale bread or the remains of cooked rice are available. But rats are opportunistic omnivores and will eat many things, including a lot of vegetable scraps and other things that typically end up in the compost pile, and will even eat the worms that often come in to help with the decomposition. I have found that the rats are attracted to a compost pile even if we avoid adding anything that is typically seen as potentially attracting them. And they seem to like making their burrows or nests in the partially decomposed compost piles, where it is often warm and safe and close to lots of food, especially in the winter. I encourage people to add all these types of normally restricted decomposable material to the community composting facility that I manage partially to reduce the need for people to manage a compost pile closer to their home, where rats may be more of an issue, but I also think that we need to find ways to manage all food wastes, including cooked foods, to recycle the nutrients back into compost for feeding the vegetables in our gardens, rather than sending this nutrient-rich material somewhere else. It is, of course, possible to build a compost pile that rats can't get into, and this is another potential way to deal with rats. A friend and neighbor has built a compost pile like this that works quite well, with welded wire sides, concrete pavers around the base, and a hinged top to prevent rats from coming in, and there are other possible options. This will restrict their food supplies and reduces possible places for them to build their nests, which will probably slow down the population growth a bit. But without other measures, the rats will still be there and find somewhere else to live, and end up eating a lot more of the vegetables in the gardens. I've seen rats remove a lot of pea pods from the gardens, eat most of a crop of young beetroot and the tops of many carrots, dig up many of the beans and pea seeds that we planted, hollow out a squash to get out the seeds, eat all of the microgreen seeds, and will happily munch on the low-hanging tomatoes. I'd rather they ate whatever was in the compost pile and stayed away from everything in the gardens, 
But for many people, keeping the rats out of the compost is a first big step. And in some contexts, it might be enough to adequately deal with rats. But I think it would take additional measures to prevent them from thriving by eating what we are growing in the gardens. Traps are the most obvious and common solution for dealing with rats, and I've tried a lot of different types of traps. The standard wire snap traps can be effective, though after a few are killed, the others seem to recognize the danger, and they are much less attractive to rats if other sources of food are around. They are not always effective at killing the rats quickly, and I've found some traps dragged quite a distance, or with still living and suffering rats a few times, and a few birds have been caught as well, so I generally don't use traps like this. I have tried live traps a few times years ago, but then I needed to either kill the occupants or set them loose far enough away to become someone else's problem. I have rigged up a few types of traps that have a flap that drops the rats into a bucket and they work occasionally, but cause a fair amount of suffering for the rats and I generally still have to kill them. The main issues with all these bait types of traps is that they are much less effective if there are other sources of food around, which is often the case in the gardens, even with the more expensive humane trap that I bought in to try. This trap has a special bait and a wire that triggers a deadbolt powered by a small CO2 cartridge, which kills the rats instantly and the trap automatically resets. It has killed a few rats since I bought it, but not enough in my context to justify the cost because if I place it close to any other food source, the rats seem to just ignore it. Poison is the other very common method of killing rats, unfortunately way too common, as a poison can also kill any predators that catch and eat the rats. I avoid using conventional poisons because of this potential for collateral damage. But a few years ago, I tried using different types of bait that I mixed myself, that contain a lot of baking soda, which apparently reacts in the stomach of the rat to produce enough gas to eventually kill the rat. Or there is a version with plaster that apparently kills the rats by hardening in the stomach without the risk of entering anything else. I know the rats ate the bait, and I did see some of the rats appearing to be suffering, and I assume they died eventually, so this type of bait seems to work and may be appropriate in some contexts, but I'd rather use other methods to avoid the possible extended suffering. After using bait like this, and when using traps, I've noticed a few times when very young rats were out searching for food, and I suspect that the adults had been killed, leaving the very young to fend for themselves. And I think that this is probably an issue with any method that only kills the adults that are out wandering in the gardens, potentially leaving the tiny occupants of the nest to die of starvation or to wander around desperate for food. Using predators to keep the rat population down is another very effective method, and cats are the most obvious option. But in my context, where the gardens are on shared land away from our house, I am hesitant to keep cats around the gardens for rat control. And cats also kill a lot of other creatures that I would prefer to have around the gardens, especially if I keep the cats hungry enough to deal with the rats. There are a few cats in the community that regularly pass through the gardens, and some of them hang around for a bit, but they don't seem to be overly curious about the rat nests and rat runs. And I got footage of at least one cat that was much more interested in the content of the compost and didn't seem interested in the rat close by and the rat didn't seem to be too bothered either. So obviously not all cats are good for controlling the rat population. We do have a few wild predators in the area, including foxes who pass through the gardens regularly, owls in the woodlands nearby, and birds of prey that are large enough to catch a rat. A number of years ago, I decided to stop trying to deal with the rats in and around the gardens to see if these wild and domestic predators would be able to stabilize the rat population. No doubt the predators were killing some rats, but not enough to keep the population at a level that was acceptable to the other users of the area, and I eventually had to take control again. Hunting is another option, and although I don't have a gun or live in an area where guns are common, it is apparently a popular way to keep rats under control in other places. Other people seem to have a lot of success using ferrets to hunt and kill rats in their burrows, but I don't know anyone who does that around here. But I used to hunt rats with my neighbor's dog years ago, where the dog would catch any rats that ran out of the compost pile that I was turning. The rats were obviously panicked for quite a while as their burrows were dug out, and when they eventually tried to escape, the dog killed most of them really quickly. 
Working with a dog like that was an effective method until he got too old, but it did require me to put in the effort to turn the compost, or at least to dig out the rat nest, which was not a quick or easy task. But it did make me realize that it was much more effective to see the compost piles as large rat traps, as it was much more effective and easy to find and dig out the rat's nest if they were in the maturing compost piles. And the rats seemed to like making their nests in these loose, slightly warm piles, especially if they were covered with something, and they were also really close to an abundant source of food that I didn't mind the rats eating. This was a big change for me, to start to see the compost piles as a place that I wanted to attract the rats to, rather than trying to keep them away, as they were much easier to control and less of a problem if they built their nests in the compost piles rather than hidden somewhere in the surrounding landscape. When my neighbor's dog got too old to help with this grim task, I decided to try to do it myself, to try to trap and kill the rats as they tried to escape when I was turning the compost piles that they'd built their burrows in. This generally required the compost to be in a container of some kind where the rats could get in, but I could seal off their burrows, or it involved building some kind of temporary enclosure around the site where I could close off any escape routes. Once I figured out how to set up the enclosures and develop the necessary skills, this became a reasonably effective way of killing most of the occupants of a rat's nest. But it was quite gruesome at times, and I wasn't as effective at dispatching the rats as my canine companion had been. So I was really glad to find a much more effective way to deal with a nest of rats without being so intimately involved. The method I've been mainly using to deal with rats for the last few years has been to asphyxiate them in their burrows or nests. I first heard of this possibility with people putting dry ice in the entrance of rat's nests, which would apparently fill the burrows with a high enough concentration of CO2 gas to kill all the rats in the nest. I've also heard of people attaching one end of a hose to the exhaust of their car and placing the other end in the burrow of a rat's nest to essentially do the same thing. But the compost and gardens are not really accessible by vehicle, and dry ice seems to be an expensive and inconvenient option around here. But that got me thinking about the possibility of using my propane-powered flame-weeding torch to fill the burrows with enough CO2 as well as smoke and other problematic gases to kill all of the rats trapped inside. I have found this to be a really effective way to manage the rat population, more effective in my context than any other method I've used. Whenever I come across signs of a rat's nest, I try to locate and seal up all of the entrances except one. And then I run the flame of the torch into the remaining burrow entrance for a few minutes, then seal it up, trapping the rats in with the smoke, carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, and without enough oxygen to survive. It isn't a perfect method, as some rats do escape, especially if I don't find all the entrances of the nests or seal them up effectively enough. And I would not use it in the context where there could be a fire risk, and it is not effective where the nests can't be sealed up enough. But if I can seal it up, then it only takes a few minutes to kill all the rats in the nest, including all of the young. One of the main criticisms I've got about this method is that I'm burning the rats alive, which I didn't think was the case as the burrows are usually quite big, but I wanted to be sure. So I put a compost thermometer into one burrow entrance that I covered with a rock and used the torch in another entrance to see how hot it would get. I was able to see the smoke escape around the rock, indicating that the burrow quickly filled with smoke, but the temperature didn't get much above 50 degrees Celsius or 120 degrees Fahrenheit. It would have been hotter in the parts of the burrow that were closer to the flame, or if I'd kept the torch on for a lot longer, but I figured the rats would naturally try to get as far away from the heat and noise as possible, and it would be hot, but not hot enough to kill them. They would die of asphyxiation. Recently, someone suggested using argon gas, which is an inert gas commonly used in welding, and apparently quite a bit heavier than air. And if I released enough gas into the entrance of the rat nest, the gas would sink into the burrow and displace the oxygen and asphyxiate the rats. Or perhaps canisters of CO2 gas could possibly do the same thing without the heat or smoke or flame, but I haven't tried using either of these options yet. I am not in the context where I can simply let the rats live in and the area around the gardens, and there don't seem to be enough natural predators around. 
if I don't want to keep a few hungry cats up in the area of the gardens, then I need to take on responsibility for keeping the rat population to a low enough level so that they aren't a problem. And if I'm going to kill the rats, I don't want to risk killing other things. And it would be better to try to reduce the amount of suffering with them dying fairly quickly. And whatever methods I use need to be effective compared to the amount of time and effort that I put in. And preferably quick and easy so that I'm more likely to do it more frequently to prevent the rat population from expanding rapidly. In my context, with a shared site away from the houses, I find it easiest to attract the rats to the compost and away from the vegetables in the gardens and to encourage them to build their nest in the maturing compost piles. This makes it a lot easier to find and asphyxiate the whole nest. And this has been the most effective way I have used to keep the rat population under control. And if I'm persistent and deal with the nests as soon as I find them, the population in the area stays at a really low level and there is no longer any damage to the vegetables in the gardens. Because I already have the torch for flame weeding, it is the easiest and most convenient method that I have to asphyxiate the rat's nest. But I think using canisters of argon and CO2 gas may be more effective and perhaps cause less panic and suffering. There are of course other ways that I could manage the rat population, including making rat-proof compost containers, which would make using bait-type traps a lot more effective, and then to asphyxiate any nests that I do come across. This would probably work well as a combination, and as is often the case, it's generally more successful to use several methods rather than just relying on one. And in other contexts, especially if I lived in an urban environment, or if I grew food on my own land far away from other people, I would probably rely on a very different range of methods to control the rat population. But in the context I'm in, this method has worked really well.